Hey guys, welcome to the Mommy Biz channel, Vita Day 4. I'm here at a party, a birthday party, for a um, friend Garrett, and this is his mom, this is Erica. She is one of my, seriously, one of my mentors when it comes to parenting, and I have some questions for her. There's going to be some background noise, I hope, it's, hope you guys can hear us. So, you have two children. How old are they? I have. My oldest son is 21, and I have a 17. Okay, and so were you, were you a stay-at-home mom all your life, or? I have been a stay-at-home mom until recently. I just um, graduated from college. I went back to college as an adult and completed my bachelor's in science in nutrition. So I have recently been a stay-at-home mom until the last year. Okay, so when the boys were younger, you were a stay-at-home mom? Yes, I was always a stay-at-home mom. Okay. Okay, so what did you do to make it work? Like for me, I, I find it kind of difficult. You know, being a stay at home mom is like isolating sometimes. It's so, it's so easy for me to get down and stressed and depressed. So what are some tips that you have for me and mom that are new to this? Okay, one of the things that really helped me a lot and at the time when my children were young, my husband was gone a lot. My husband was in the military. And so, as they always say in the military, the hardest part the hardest job in the military is a military wife. And so that was really difficult to have my husband gone a lot. Mm -hmm. But the things that really helped me a lot was um, just being consistent with my kids and being creative, always finding new things to do with my sons. Also, people um, walking through the door, sorry. Also, um, one of the things that I did was I joined play groups. Play groups. Okay. And with play groups, you know, we would take our children to the park, we'll take them to the library. Okay. We always had hands-on craft activity type things going on with the children. And just always keeping the children busy. <laughs> also, one of the things that I will mention for a new mom, especially when you have small children, is to when your children are sleeping, you take that time to sleep. Okay, so take, take that a nap time to rest. Okay. Most of the time as parents, mothers, we want to take the time to get everything done when the children are, are sleeping. But then we end up wearing ourselves out. Okay. So one of the recommendations I would make is for your children resting, you take the time to rest. Okay. And if you can get it done, you get it done. Okay. If you can't, then don't stress about it. Okay. Because that's when we stress about it. That's what makes us have anxiety, we become depressed, like we never accomplish it. But as long as our children are happy, then we should be happy. Okay. Did you ever, because I find myself doing this sometimes, like comparing myself to my own mom, like I'm not as clear as her, I'm not as good as this other mom, I don't do this, I don't do that. Did you ever find yourself, sorry, did you ever find yourself like comparing yourself to other moms? One, my biggest role model was my mother. And I think back on my childhood and I think about my mother. And my mom took a lot of time and sacrifices for us as children. She was a stay at home mom for many years until my youngest brother, I, my youngest brother and I are 11 years apart. And so she stayed home all that time. She stayed home all that time with my siblings and I until my young, youngest brother went to kindergarten. And that really helped me because it helped me as far as the sacrifice that my mother made mm -hmm. to be home with her children. Okay. And so that helped me to become a better mom, to um, learn how to cook and you know, oh, um, take care of my home. One of the things I will suggest for moms, for new moms, and you know, with your families, don't compare yourself to other people. The most important thing is, especially when you're young, mm -hmm. your, your family is new, mm -hmm. and you're learning you and your spouse, or learning about each other, or you're new, you're learning about each other, you have a baby, you have a child. So the important thing is to take the time as a family and learn your family. Okay. Learn your spouse and learn your children. Wow. And another important thing that I would recommend for, for parents is to Mom has her time with the children. And it's always important as moms that we allow dad, when he comes home, to have, to his, have time. his time. So you, at that time you can kind of like leave and do what you right. do for, to recharge yourself. Right. And also, you know, a lot of times moms are new to being a mom and we want to, you know, do everything. And we want to tell dad, no, we do it this way. You have to do this. You can't do that. Let dad learn. Okay. You know, his method of you know, keeping the baby calm and, you know, keeping the baby relaxed. Because if we don't allow dad to have the it's difficult for dad to buy.
Try to allow dad to have that bonding time as well. So that is very important. That is very important that both mom and dad have that time of bonding. How are we on time? Five minutes okay. and 30 seconds. Okay, so um, another question that I had is like, I know that you have been homeschool, you've done homeschool for a long time. And what tips would you have for someone wanting to homeschool but not knowing really where to start? Okay. And also, I guess I want to know more about how do you stop from procrastinating or how do you, yeah, how do you stop from procrastinating and how do you. For no reason. Um, really push through it. Okay. One of the things I would say with homeschooling, homeschooling actually starts when the baby is in your room. Mm -hmm. You begin to develop, that child begins to develop when they're in your room. Okay. One of the things with my husband and I, when our oldest son was in my room, we played video, well not videos, but we played music. We had a huge set of headphones. Okay. We would take the headphones and just stretch over my head and we played the music. I was. I was just allowing the baby to have that time of music and like that. We played the music and he actually was lifting his head up and looking around trying to find where the line was, 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 but he was familiar. So I would say that learning and homeschooling begins when a child is in your home. You know, mom and dad are ready to the baby. You know, every night my husband will be to the baby. And so that was the beginning of homeschooling. And so I would say with homeschooling, it takes a lot of discipline. Yeah. But when the children are young, I can't say that you need a lot of discipline. Because their minds are so creative, they're growing. And as they get older, you just with age, you change your structure. So while they're young, while they're young, you allow them to be creative and allow them to uh, guide the, the uh, learning time. Okay. Allow them to play. And guide so get cues from them. Yes, you can allow them. Even if with my children when they were young, if they were playing with toys, I had music going in the background. If they were sleeping. I have music in the background. Yes. Their minds are like computers. And they can absorb so much in one time. We as adults, we can, our minds are blocked and we can only, you know, do one or two things at a time. But children, they can be playing, but still hearing music in the background, different things, and they're still learning and they're absorbing everything. And so when they're young, I would just say, allow them to be creative. Um, one of the things that I used to I remember, you know, like when they were eating, the kids, when they were eating, one thing that we used to do, we used to have a pudding. You can make art with their food. 810. You can make 10. 810. Okay. You can allow them to make art with their food. We used to take a tray and we put pudding on the tray and allow them to paint with the pudding and they could eat it or whatever and it wasn't toxic or anything like that. And they enjoyed themselves. So allow the children to be creative. So, like, when they got into like elementary things, like where did you go to find the resources of like how to go about homeschooling? What I did is um, I just I didn't put boundaries. Okay. Um, you know that there was structure, but there wasn't. Structure. What I mean by that was whatever book or activity learning was. So we went to the grocery store. We lived in China. We lived in Japan. Wherever we went, that was learning. We went to the bank. We went to the market. So learning was incorporated in everything that we did. So I say structure, but not structure. And then whatever book that I found, I taught them. And my older son, my son was three years apart, three and a half years apart, so whatever my older son was, I allowed the youngest to so I didn't put that Awesome, awesome. So we hope to have um, Erica back with us sometime, be the day four. So thank you guys for watching. Until next time. Thank you, and bless you and your family.